Today I'm unboxing and testing this uh, Wi-Fi extender slash power line adapter from Netgear. This is the Powerline Wi-Fi Essential 1000 and this is a gigabit ethernet connection. So for you guys that are new that don't know what a power line adapter is, it's basically a way of sending your network signal over the existing power line in your house. This is sent through a standard electrical outlet. And how this is able to work is that your electrical and your network are sent on different frequencies. That way they can actually coexist on the same wires. So think about it like a DSL connection, how you're able to get your network and your phone on the same cable. It's the same basic concept. So this can be helpful if you guys have dead spots in your house or you have a device that you want to hardwire in and it's not close to your existing router. A lot of these streamers complain about slow network connection and you're not able to plug directly in and we know that the best results need a hardwire so this can be a remedy for that as well. So before you set this up, you want to take a couple things into consideration. One, try to always plug directly into an outlet. So if you guys have a power strip or UPS or uninterrupted power supply, you want to try to avoid those because sometimes those can see the electrical signal as something else so you want to try to plug in directly to the wall and sometimes you have to play with which outlet works best for your power line adapter so hydro outlets like stuff that your microwave or your fridge or your stove is plugged into might give you different results from a, a different circuit that doesn't have that much draw in it another thing to take into consideration for you guys that are in apartments just know that it is possible for your neighbor below you above you across the hallway from you to get your network signal if you guys are on the same circuit so keep that in mind and there is a, a security app that goes with it that you can go ahead and configure and last but not least guys less is more so try to avoid using too many of these guys in the same house they do have different variations of this with multiple outlets and i put links to multiple options in the description where uh, you can get one that works best for you so this particular one has one port and it does also have a wi-fi option on it as well so it works as both a wi-fi extender and a power line adapter and i'll be testing both when i will go ahead and hook it up here's the front of the box on the side that show the package contents, system requirements, specifications, as well as the warranty. So you can pause the video if you need more time. But you can see on the system requirements, guys, it does support 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz, which I think is humongous. So on the back, this is a visual representation of what power line adapter is and how it works, guys. So it says leap through walls and floors. Not exactly how it works. It doesn't go through your wall. It goes through your wire and, um, and connects. So think about it as this one just sending a signal all over the house. And then this one kind of grabbing a signal and pulling the network connection there. So let's go ahead and open the box. All right, so here are the contents of the box, guys. You can see first we have two ethernet cables came with it, probably about five feet long or so. Next we have the quick start guide. Uh, definitely read this guide before you go ahead and set it up. It's gonna tell you what everything means, how to hook it up as well, guys. So here's the actual adapter. So this is what's gonna plug directly into your router. Below, you can see it does have the ethernet port. It does have a factory reset right here. And this is the security button. Nothing else, just the part where you plug it in directly into your wall. So here's the actual extender. It does have the antennas that move up around how you guys want to place it just for your, your best signal, I should say. So flip it back up. On the side here, you do have your Ethernet port. You also have a factory reset right here. This is your WPS button. This is your security button. And this is your on and off switch. Before we jump into the setup, I just wanted to point out what the LEDs are and what they mean for this extender. So first thing is the Wi-Fi LED, which is the blue one right here. And this has two functions. It's either off, so completely blank, or it's lit, solid blue. And when it's blue, what that means is that the radio is on. So you have an on off for the actual Wi-Fi. The next one is your pickup plug LED. And this is probably the most important LED on this actual device, guys. So when it's illuminated red, that means that the link rate is below 50 megabits per second if it's amber that means that the link rate is 50 to 80 megabits per second when it's green that means that your link rate is over 80 megabits per second now if it's off that means that the adapter did not find 
any compatible power line device in your household. Third one is your power LED. I uh, see their solid green, electrical power is on, solid amber. That means that the adapter is in power saving mode. If it's blinking green, that means that the adapter is in the process of setting up security. And the last option is that it's off. Last but not least is your ethernet. It's either plugged in or unplugged. So it's on or off dependent if you have your device connected to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it connected. After that, I wanna do a couple of speed tests just to make sure I have the best possible network connection. So here's the router that I will be plugging into. This is a nice Hawk X10 and I went ahead and plugged it into the power outlet I ran the Ethernet cable and you can see I do have two LEDs right now one's the power one's the Ethernet so now I'm heading downstairs gonna plug in the Wi-Fi adapter it does take a minute or so for it to come online and once it comes online you will see that the LEDs will be illuminated so the four LEDs will be lit up showing that you have Ethernet you have power and also that your Wi-Fi is connected well, once you see the LEDs like this go back upstairs and now the actual adapter has three LEDs ready to go now this shows that you're on the network and it's time to start configuring so once you get it hooked up guys you do have a couple options to set this up so you can set it as a standalone network that means it'll have its own SSID or Wi-Fi name or you can make it an extension of your current network or set it up as an access point so I'm going to show you how to set it up quickly as a standalone network so I definitely recommend doing an initial setup just to have some security on your network and then you can go back in and configure it how you really want it so first things first make sure you connect to the Wi-Fi extender so once you get an active network connection you're going to go to this website HTTP www.mywifiext.net click there it is going to ask you to log in uh, just so you guys know the default username and password is admin and then the password is password we're going to sign in now initially with that but once you get in guys please go ahead and change that as well so hit sign in so once you get into your Wi-Fi settings, guys, you're going to see these two screens and basically you have two networks right here. You do have your 2.4 gigahertz up top and this goes all the way to about here. And then below that, you do have your 5 gigahertz network. So here's the default name for the 2.4 gigahertz and here's the default name for the 5 gigahertz. Now you can change that if you wanted to. So just for this video, I am going to leave the SSID with the same name. But one thing I wanted to do, guys, is change your password. So this password right here. Um, everyone that basically got this device is going to know you don't want to hang on to a default password guys so erase it here you're going to type in something that's unique to you so whatever and same thing for your five gigahertz so of course i'm not going to leave mine like this but once you named it once you change the name of your network and give it a password all you have to do is hit apply right here and it will take the current configuration so one more thing we wanted to do is we're going to change the password to the actual admin panel that we logged in so remember when we logged in guys we had to use the admin and password for the default username and password that also needs to be changed so to do that we're going to go to maintenance we're going to go to set password and right here, you're going to put in your old password, which would be password because that's what was given. And then we're just going to give it a new password. So whatever you want to call it, just give it a new password. Next time you go to this website, my Wi-Fi extension.net, you will use this new password. So definitely want to take those two steps before you do anything else, guys. Secure your password, change the default admin for logging into the web app, and then you should be good to go. And once everything's configured, my goal was to test as many plugs as I could in the house, in the garage, just to see what speeds I'm getting. So just so you know, I am paying for 85 megabits per second download and seven megabits per second upload. So here's my first test, guys. You can see on this particular one, I'm getting 26 megabits per second download and 7 3.3 upload now 7.3 is consistent but the 26 is a drop off and if you look over here to the left the actual pickup plug led is red and that means that my link rate is below 50 megabits per second so all in all this probably is not a good outlet to use for my power line adapter now here's an outlet that gave me a really good results guys you can see my ping is uh, 14 milliseconds my download is 85 and my upload is still 7.25 now if you look at the actual pick up plug led it is green which means i am getting link speed over 80 megabits per second so this is the same outlet guys this time i am connected via wi-fi you look to the right where it says netgear 5g extension this is the connection that i use the speed test on you can see my results are still impressive 50 millisecond ping 86 download a 7 upload and uh, just as stable as i did get from the wire connection so what it boils down to guys it's all about what plug you're using so on the pickup plug indicator on your device guys please pay attention to that if it's green you should get a solid network connection similar 
similar to what you're getting from your actual router and if you're a different color you might want to try to find a different plug for your setup so that's my final thoughts guys very good device very useful especially if you have dead spots in your house or if you just want to put a wired connection where it's not available it is currently on amazon i'll put a link in the description i also put a link to a couple other devices that are similar and i'll put a link to my amazon store which has multiple network devices so remember to like share and subscribe hit that thumbs up please drop a comment in the comment section below let me know what you think of this device once again thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you on the next one